Hello, my name is Simon Blackett and I'm the chair of Braemar Community Limited. Braemar Community Limited was set up around 16 years ago to carry out local projects. And at present, we've got about 256 members out of a total population of around about 500 people. Projects to date include creation of a car park, building two footbridges, taking over Octavan as a crofting community, which is now as a self-guided tourist attraction, operating Braemar Castle, and we're currently uh, carrying out a, a 1.5 million fundraising act operation. We've set up a community hydro with around about 100 local subscribers. We operate St. Margaret's as a community arts venue. We've had a very successful mountain festival, which we're hoping very much to run in 2021. We have a Braemore outdoor group, which covers pathworks and cycle routes and basically looking after the paths round about the village. And we've developed a play park and a nature trail. Now, housing in the village has long been a problem. And with the arrival of the National Park 20 years ago and the Fife Arms opening up a couple of years ago, the problem is getting worse with ever increasing house prices. So locals are priced out and there are few affordable options or sites available. All this has been flagged up in community action plans. Plus, we've had a recent influx of hotel workers wanting housed in the village and to the extent that some of them are now being housed in Ballata. So you can see we do have a big issue about housing, although we know we're not unique in that. Now we've identified a site in the centre of the village, which has been allocated in the local plan for a number of years. And planning permission does exist for 11 units, but sadly it's not been developed by the landowner for a variety of different reasons. So due to lobbying by one of our local councillors, the opportunity for the community to take control of the site has been looked into and we're now well underway. The planners have been consulted and have been very helpful. We have in, in, in the National Park here, we have the, the planners from the National Park and from Aberdeenshire Council. And the landowner has also been very helpful and we are currently uh, negotiating an option and the legal team is putting that to uh, a good position now. To go back a few months, we secured funding for a feasibility study and Rural Housing Scotland was instructed. And that's Derek Logie and Sam Foster. And you'll hear more from him in a minute. And the breakthrough that came out of this feasibility study was the opportunity for a new access track, because this has been one of the pinch points for, this, for the project up to date. Now linked to this uh, site there is a well-loved local wood which you can see here in the in the pictures and as a result of our discussions with the landowner we are now in a position where we are negotiating for ownership of that wood to be transferred to the local community. Funding has been obtained and it's with the lawyers so hopefully in a matter of months, that wood will, uh, will be a community wood. We've had funding from a Scottish land fund and we're well underway. So you can see that the existence and the operation of a local development company like Braemar Community Limited has been a game changer for Braemar. Thanks for listening to me. And I'm now gonna hand over to our project officer, Sam Foster, who will take up the story. Thanks very much, Simon. Yes, as Simon mentioned, I'm Sam Foster and I work with Rural Housing Scotland, a charity that works with communities across the whole of Scotland to help them identify their housing need and then to meet that housing need. And back in 2019, as Simon mentioned, we undertook a feasibility study with Braemar Community Limited to find out what the housing need was exactly and what, how that housing need could be met. Now the, the site that we looked at on the edge of the village, it had a number of constraints to it and as Simon mentioned, one of those was the access track. So through the community engagement work that we did in the feasibility study, we were able to identify a really good site for that, a really good location for that access track. 
But more importantly than that, we were able to, with the help of the community, increase the number of homes that we could potentially get on this site from 11 to 15. And that does two things. The first thing it does is it spreads the cost of the infrastructure, the services, the new road, it spreads that between a greater number of homes, which makes it more affordable. More importantly though, the increased number of homes increases how many houses, how many households we can provide housing for, which goes a much greater length towards providing housing in the village. So at the end of that feasibility study, we, as most projects do, we hit a bit of a stumbling block. And that stumbling block is how you take that very successful, very productive feasibility study forward into a set of design proposals that are fully costed. The funding for our project comes mainly from the Rural Housing Fund and the, one of the mortgage companies like Ecology Building Society or Triodos. But we can only draw down that money once we've got the costed tenders from the contractors. So to, to deal with that, what we had to do was to try and find some gap funding to take us between the feasibility study and starting on site. And with thanks to Ecology Building Society who tipped us off about this, we heard about a fund called CAF Venturesome. CAF Venturesome have a community-led loan housing fund and that is specifically designed to pay for design team work after feasibility study up until the submission of planning. Raymar Community Limited is the first community in the whole of Scotland to have secured this funding. It's the first time it's been opened in Scotland and Braemar Community got it. And that funding allows us to pay for the full design team and pay for all of the necessary surveys that we need to get to a point where we've submitted the planning application. The planning application is the biggest risk to the whole project because without having planning we don't have security on the site and there are so many aspects in planning that we need to get over. Without getting that, we can't really take this forward. So we're now in a really strong position where the community, as Simon mentioned, is developing the agreement with the landowner to transfer ownership of the land. We're putting together the funding package for this um, with Rural Housing Fund money, with the mortgage company and with CAF Venturesome. And we also, excitingly, have our design team in place. And the design team is going to take the feasibility study initial designs, which you can see on the screen just now. They're going to take those and they're going to turn those into a set of design proposals that will hopefully meet the brief. And the brief that we've set for the project in Braemar is quite aspirational. Braemar, as many of you will know, is the coldest place to live in the UK. And as a result of that, it means that aspects like fuel poverty are a real issue. If you're going to suffer from fuel poverty, you're going to suffer from it in Braemar. So one of the aspects in our brief is that the houses must be incredibly energy efficient. And we've set a target for that that is very similar to the passive house level, which some of you will be familiar with. We've also set standards for the spaces inside and the accessibility of these homes so that they are accessible to almost all people. We've set standards for room sizes and for ceiling heights and for the amount of daylight in these buildings so that they're nice places to live. We've set standards for the materials that these buildings are going to be built from so that they're non-toxic and so they can be taken apart at the end of their life, which is part of what's called the circular economy. And that's a really important part of what we need to do these days. And that leads into the low carbon side of the design of these houses. So as well as them being very low carbon in terms of the emissions that come from for heating them and lighting them, the building materials that we'll be building them from will be low carbon as well. There'll be very little concrete, very little steel, very little materials with what's called high embodied energy and high embodied carbon. And we're aiming for low embodied energy so that it's not just the running of them, but it's the building of them and then the taking apart in 200 years time that is low carbon as well. So it's a very aspirational project, but the community group in Braemar, Braemar Community Limited and the other people who we have in the steering group are a very well organised team and together we've achieved a whole range of things with the people not just in the steering group but with Councillor Jeeva Blackett who's part of our team as well. 
watch this space because it's going to be a very, very exciting project. Um, thanks very much for watching from, from Simon and me, and we hope you found that interesting.